On to get it started now, the kicker, Chris Boswell. And we are underway from Cincinnati. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And he'll be brought down shy of the 20, so the decision to bring it out of the end zone, not a good one. Here come the Bengals now to take over. And they'll be led out by their quarterback, a former Pac-12 Offensive Player of the Year from the University of Washington. It's Jake Browning. This guy's leadership is so important to how this offense functions. He doesn't shrink from any moments on game day, and everything he does, he does with confidence. He sets the example in practice off the field and is the guy leading everyone out for each possession. Here's Joe Mixon as they start on the ground. And a really good show of force there as he gets through for four tough yards. Well, in every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown. So a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now, hopefully get to the perimeter later. And let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. Browning's throw complete there to Smith. And he'll be corralled right around the 34. 12 yards that time and a Cincinnati first down. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches as we just saw him do there because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days. But you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target. And that's how he'll shred a defense. It's a pickup of 12. Second play in a row with a 12-yard gain. It's a game of matchups, and that's why you take your receivers and move them around a bunch, especially your best guys. And when they work out of the slot, you often hear the coaches talk about how great it is because it gives you a two-way go. You can break out or you can break in. That makes it hard to defend. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Well, they've been back on their heels a little bit here in this drive, but a chance to exhale just a little bit there with incompletion on first down. Now they have to gear up try and get two more stops and escape this drive. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. They'll look to throw again. This goes out wide for Mixon. And he'll be down at the 46. Well, they go from 146 to the other on a pickup of eight. And they're getting him involved early. You feel like they saw something on tape or they just have a sense with him because he's had a good week of practice or something in that area that they want him involved. Just as you said, they want him to touch it either in the running game or the passing game, but they must like the matchups they're getting. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have a Bengals first down by a couple of yards as they're able to convert here on third and three. Well, they kept it simple there, CD, only needing the short gain to move the chain, so they didn't want to go with a deep throw. They just go with that safer, shorter throw and able to convert. Nothing wrong with that at all, partner. Check the box, right? Make sure you pick up the first down. Offense is getting established. You're moving the ball. You're not turning it over. Check, check, check. They like what they're doing early in the game. Well, hold on here, because on that last run, it looks like we have a player who was shaken up. Well, the medical staff is going to come out here and take a look, and we will take a short break. Now they'll fake the jet sweep here and throw off play action. They're unable to connect, but a late flag comes in. And the contact may have come too early. So the pass incomplete in the end zone, but the flag comes out for interference. And now you're set up right on the doorstep of the goal line. One yard away changes what your play calls are going to be. Back to throw. Browning. That's to Chase. He's got it. Touchdown, Cincinnati. A one-yard touchdown pass. And the Bengals are on the board first here this afternoon. 
first and goal, forget running the football, forget establishing anything, just put it in the end zone with the pass for a touchdown. Oh, yeah, I guess that's the definition of catching the defense off guard there. They weren't expecting that. And that totally goes against type, doesn't it? When you think first and goal from the one, you're thinking running play. Footing always a concern, but the extra points up and good. And it's now a 7-0 game. to the touchdown McPherson on to kick this one away oh a dangerous return man showing it here and good starting field position he'll get this one all the way up to about the 35 yard line so out come the Steelers now for their first drive they're led out by the second year pro out of pit looking for a big jump in year two Kenny Pickett and when you watch Kenny Pickett play, you see a young man who got better every season in college and really blossomed in his final campaign, took his game to a new level and made him a first round pick in the NFL. He's the type of kid who can beat you with his mind, beat you with his arm and occasionally with his legs. A tough, skilled performer. Kenny Pickett, he's got some moxie to him. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes, but the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. Here's second and 10 now from the 35. Pick it a look to throw it here. Good coverage downfield led to him taking off, picking up the first down on a 13-yard run. That's the first time he's called his own number, but he's got to be overjoyed with the results. He wasn't just going to settle for a modest gain. To me, he was determined to come through with a big message to a defense that slept on him in the pocket. To the air on first down with Pickett. He'll get this to his tight end. That's Pat Fryermuth. And he's brought down. They get 10 more there, and I believe that'll be enough for another first down at will. Well, the first drive here and the first time that we've called a big tight end's name, but I, I can assure you this, Charles, it, it won't be the last. No, it won't, because when he gets going, now it opens up opportunities on the perimeter because that'll draw the defense towards him in the middle of the field. Now your wide receivers are getting involved as this game goes on. And this defense not ready for that one as he'll take this down inside the 25. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. They're making it look easy out there. Another first down. So, so far on this drive, let me do this little bit of math here. Four plays, three first downs. That's a pretty good recipe for success. They stay on the ground. Again, it's Harris. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. Quite the opening drive march they're on right now. It looks a lot like what we saw in practice prior to the game, doesn't it? You know, because on that last big practice beforehand, you go through your offensive script. You go through your play calling. You go through all the stuff and establish things, and it looks like it's going like clockwork right now for them. Got a man, and he hits him in stride. James Daniels, the guard, called for the penalty there. A terrible spot for a holding call as he'll try again, but now from further back on first and goal. Looking to throw, Pickett. Pickens on the slant. And a good gain here of nine from the 19 down to the 10. They kept the receiver in the short field, but that let his quarterback get the ball quickly to him before either guy in double coverage could react. From the 10 yard line, here's second and goal. Pickett gonna bootleg it. And he's got his man in stride, complete. 
That time the completion goes for four yards and we're set up with a third and goal. Well, that was an okay hook up there with his tight end, but unfortunately they didn't get the kind of yards they had hoped for. That's going to bring up third down. This will be play number eight on the drive. It's third and goal. Now pick it. Got his man. It's caught for a Steelers touchdown. Allen Robinson from six yards away. And the Steelers respond to that opening drive touchdown with one of their own. On those slants, everything happens so quickly. What makes it work? The timing between the passer and the receiver. In this case, a slant route. Ordinarily, it's probably about three steps before you go on the slant. In this amount of time, I think it was a two-step deal. Boom, put his foot in the ground and got inside for the pass. Got inside for the pass, got inside for the catch and the score. Boswell good with the extra point, and we are tied at seven. Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. Cincinnati coming back onto the field here for their second drive. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you've scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go around. Here's Browning. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there, and it's second down. I think that's how this defense is going to need to play these tight ends. Again, get right up on them and stay physical. And that paid off on that play, helping force that incompletion. Here's second and 10 now from the 29. An option handoff here to Mixon. And to the 36-yard line, taken down there after getting eight yards. Playing against a 3-4 front is really challenging for offensive linemen because they can do so many different things. But when you're running the football, if you can handle the nose tackle up front and then maybe a guard can slide up to the second level and block a linebacker, that's when you have success running the football. On third and two, Browning able to find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have a Bengals first down by a couple of yards as they're able to convert here on third and three. Someone sharp in this game. I mean, a touchdown pass on the first drive and comes right back, and he's flinging it around really well here. A really nice throw there to pick up the first down. You, you kind of just feel a laser focus and confidence about him, and I think we saw that this week, didn't we? Talking to him and the coaches, they felt good about his performance coming up. Yeah, I was really impressed with that last practice we saw when they went through two-minute drill, when they went through all the different situations. Ball hardly hit the ground, and I thought, yeah, he might be locked in for this one. That certainly appeared to be a play call where they were just trying to make second down, second and short. I think they thought the coverage was off a little bit more than it was. Nice job there pressing up on it and forcing the incompletion. On second down, here's Mixon. And he'll take this for about four up to the 46-yard line. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. These two teams all tied after one. Ready for the second quarter from Cincinnati. It's the Bengals with the football here. Here's third and six as they've got it as we resume action. To throw on third down, Browner. And not enough on the throw that time as that one is incomplete. Now that's a good bounce back after giving up a touchdown on the opening drive. Just one first down permitted and then out. Obviously no loss of confidence with that defense and now they get to turn it back to their offense. Now here's Brad Robbins now. Deep to return is Calvin Austin. Now 
And he couldn't get it to check up. That kicks all the way into the end zone for a touchback. So Pittsburgh retakes the field for their second offensive possession. And the momentum just continuing to build and build for them. They had the touchdown, their last drive to tie the game. Now their defense does its job. And Charles, all of a sudden, they've got a chance to capture the lead here. And we're seeing a really nice exhibition of what coaches love to call complimentary football. Offense gets a tie. Defense does its job, gets the ball right back. And their teammates now. And nothing but green grass here, middle of the field. And they work this well up field across the 45. The extra effort after the catch makes it good for a gain of 26 and also a first down. That's a nice throw there, and he's obviously feeling pretty good because remember, he had a touchdown pass on the last drive, and here he comes out throwing again, and they wind up getting good yardage and a first down right out of the gate. A big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and 10. They hand this off to Harris. And across midfield he goes and into Bengal territory. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. He wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. Second down and six now. They'll keep it on the ground. Harris again. Powering forward. Shreds him with a stiff arm. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. 57 yards rushing for him now, and he's only carried the ball four times. They had a chance to limit his yardage, but he was able to fight off that tackle. So it's not just the responsibility of the guys who missed the tackles along the way. It's all 11 on defense, able to stop this guy, unable to do it on that play. They've got to find a way. How about his ability to break through and gain that yardage? And he's able to break out of one tackle, but then quickly brought down. Oh, it's time to give a little credit there to the defense. They played that very well because it was a drag route, and he ran it a little shallower than normal as he worked straight across the field. He was hoping he'd get lost behind the defensive line, but once he made the catch, nowhere to turn up field and gain any yardage. They'll try the right side with Harris. And a hard work and run here as he's got it inside the 20, down to the 17. A gain of 10, good for a Steeler first down. This has been a good drive so far, and it's been the running game for the most part that's powered them down there. Another nice burst there, picking up a first down. Now it's first and 10, as you said, in the red zone. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. Pick it. And it's complete. He gets this one to Washington. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And that'll make it second down. This drive, it's been a good mix. Three passing plays, three runs, hitting on all three of those passes, and the last one putting him in the red zone. So wouldn't you think play action right here? Because you've got the ability and had the ability to run it and throw it. Go play action and take your shot at the end zone. On the give, this is Harris. And that'll hurt the average a bit, as this time they're able to get him behind the line. Now they're going to be dealing with a third and seven. Is that one officially a loss of one? With his size, he's a tough man to bring down, but they do a nice job there stopping his progress and not allowing him to get back to the line of scrimmage. This will be the eighth play of the drive. It's third and seven. Pick it. He'll look to throw it. That is caught by Johnson. Touchdown! Kenny Pickett connecting with Deontay Johnson. And the Steelers have taken the lead. An excellent, long, sustained offensive drive. And now they can look across the field and see a defense that looks a little bit beaten down. Right now as an offensive coordinator, you're thinking to yourself, can I dial up the knockout punch? Extra point now by Boswell. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. So that drive goes eight plays. And in the end, it was Deontay Johnson's touchdown catch to cap the drive. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. Go! 
And able to get this out to the 25. And the Bengals offense getting set and ready to go again here. That 7 nothing lead of theirs short-lived as they've now given up two straight touchdowns to fall behind by seven. Yeah, but no cause for discouragement here. Yeah, they've fallen behind, but haven't they proven that they can go down and score? So what was the formula that got them down there the first time? Get back to something close to that, and maybe they can get this game tied up. They begin with a run by Mixon. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. The drive starting play, a good one. Give him 19. That run's successful in large part because they had a lot of extra help blocking up front. Yeah, you've got guys who can do that very, very well. In addition, they can catch the football. So sometimes when they line up with three tight ends, it's not necessarily to run it, and that gives you an advantage when you do decide to barrel off the line of scrimmage and block people downfield. They'll set up the screen here to mix it. A good convergence there defensively. Only a yard, and it's second down. Good reactions there defensively. That screen was a little slow in developing, and they shut that one down with little gain. From the 46, here's the second down and nine. Now Browning. Airing one out for Boyd. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. They decided the opportunity was there and launched a deep ball, but he was unable to get away from the defender, couldn't create space, couldn't uncover at the end of the route, and that one winds up incomplete. And the Bengals on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. This is third and nine. Looking to throw. Browning. Oh, this will be incomplete. The rush gets home just as he was letting that go. That could have been worse. Instead, it's fourth down. One first down here, and that's all, folks. Good work by this defense to hold things in check and force a punting situation. On now to punt, Brad Robbins. This is away, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. And the punt over the side in the air, and the spot will be inside the 35. McKinney Pickett and the Steelers ready to work once again. He's got two touchdown passes on his first two drives, and he'll try again here on drive three. Pickett back to throw. And the timing a bit off that time as that one falls to the ground. Just his second incompletion so far. He's 8 for 10. I think he'll take 80%. There's no doubt that he will, but if you're the defensive play caller, you better circle what you just dialed up on your play sheet and come back to it because you just caused an incompletion. You need a few more of those. Here's Pickett. And his throw is incomplete. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. Back to throw. Pick it. Able to find his man. It's Pickens. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A good pickup there, 21 yards. Kind of a dangerous throw there. He's off balance when he gets rid of it. But this is all about a quarterback knowing what he can get away with. And that time, it turns into a completion and a healthy gain as well. This is Harris. And they'll wind up getting this to the 37, gain of nine. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely, pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? So from the 37, here's second and a yard. They'll run again with Harris. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. 
We've hit the two-minute mark of the second quarter, 14 to 7. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. From the gun, here's Pickett. Oh, and that is incomplete. Everything about that play tells you about today's NFL offenses and what they're asking out of running backs. You can't just be a guy who can run the football. You have to be able to catch it as well, and he didn't get that done on that play. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. To throw again, pick it. And that went too far in front. He couldn't reel it in. It's incomplete. Feels like they're getting caught in between here because they had incompletions on first and second down. Now you got to worry a little bit about the clock because you prefer not to give them another shot here in the first half. But if you don't pick up the first down, guess what? You're likely going to have to. Throwing on third down. Here's Pickett. Robinson's got it. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals 21. The drive stays intact with a pickup of 13. So he turned to a trusted, familiar face in that third down situation. It paid off. Yeah, you go to your veteran receiver in that spot. So you can't underestimate him when he's on the field defensively. Make sure you know where he is because he understands how to get open in key situations. Dialing up another pass here. Pickett. He finds Pickens over the middle. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. That was a nicely run slant route. And what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. Not sure what happened out there, but it looked like the timing was a little off on that throw. Well, you know I'm a defender, so what am I going to say? Great defense. And darn right. They did something to disrupt that timing. They tried the throw on second down, unsuccessful. Now it's third and one. Again, he'll drop to throw. That is caught. Now the Steelers use the first of their three timeouts as the clock will stop with 37 seconds to play in this first half. So another third down conversion, and now they've got a first and goal. Back to throw again. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. The way he's been slinging in the first half, you expect everything he throws to go for a touchdown, but I guess he's got to wait to try and pick up that third, isn't he? Yeah, I thought he had him for a second, but you're right, not to be. They'll try again here from the seven on second and goal. They'll throw again with Pickett. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. All right, Captain. It's batting down the hatches time defensively. Dodged two pass attempts to the end zone. Now what do you think they're going to try and dial up on third and goal? Well, knowing them and knowing what we just seen, I think they're throwing it again, don't you? I think you have to. I think in this situation, you've got to run out of your running plays, fire another one into the end zone. Pick it now, third and goal. And in for the Steelers, touchdown! Kenny Pickett fighting Pat Fryermuth. And the Steelers will extend their lead in the final minute of the half. And this drive, Charles, very well timed as they score with very little time remaining in this first half. And I'm reminded that they get the second half kickoff as well, so they can break this one wide open before the other guys have a chance to possess the football. Boswell for the extra point. It's good, and it is now 21 to 7. That one was an extended drive, 14 plays all told. And it ends with the Steelers finding the end zone.
Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. Well, now how about this return? And all in all, a pretty solid return. Nearly got it to the 35. They'll mark him down officially at the 34. Now the Bengal offense going to see the ball one more time in this first half. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. Clock at 20 seconds to go in the half as they come up first and 10. To throw, Browning. Over the middle, that's caught by Chase. Now the Bengals going to use the first of their timeouts as it'll come with 15 seconds to play in the first half. On first and 10, Browning. Here's Higgins out of the right side. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Back to throw, Browning. And he'll find Chase on the right side complete. And now we'll get a late timeout as it comes in the waning moments of quarter number two. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. From the right hash and call it an even 50 yards. McPherson's kick is good. And that will do it for this first half. So we've reached halftime here with the visiting Steelers out in front. As we send you down to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports halftime report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much, and welcome in everyone to our downtown Orlando studios in this EA Sports Halftime Report. This has certainly been a fun one to watch so far. We knew this was going to be a battle, and we have not been disappointed. This is the kind of game that could wind up hinging on which side can play mistake-free football the rest of the way. All right, Coach, thanks very much. Fine work as always as we welcome you back for quarter number three. Forecast calling for more of the same. The rain set to continue as we are underway in the second half. This taken in right around the goal line. And his guys will get the football right at the 20 yard line. Well, the Steeler offense ready to get going to begin this third quarter. And they've got the lead CD. What do you expect from them in this second half? Well, I like what they were able to do on the ground in the first half because they had a lot of success running the ball, and I certainly think we'll see more of that. But I'd keep an eye on that defense, and I think their coaches up in the box will do the exact same thing. If they start to see one or two guys start to creep towards the line of scrimmage, that'll be licensed to take some shots downfield. Pick it to throw on first down. Here's Johnson with a reception. 
And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. 36 yards on the play. Another big play right there. And this is where, as an offense, you can really put the hammer down. You've got a double-digit lead, but those other guys, they've been hanging around. A touchdown here could put this game out of reach, and that's a strong step towards getting it done. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and 10. On the ground, it's Harris. And he'll fight forward on the straight-ahead running for just a couple of yards, second down. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground, but I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. Pickett will look to throw it here. Completes this one to Pickens. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals' 29-yard line. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. They run the play fake. Here's Pickett. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. Well, a momentary speed bump there with that throw, partner. The defense had other ideas, and they're trying to mount a small stand before this drive reaches the end zone. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Now Pickett. Got an open man. It's Pickens. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of, until they stop him, why not go back to it? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. Trying to pick it up on the ground with Harris. And he'll have the first down, getting this one to the 14-yard line. 88 yards for him on the ground now as he has been terrific here this afternoon. Most of their damage has been done through the air. I mean, they've rung the bell three times with passing touchdowns, but guess what? Ground game has not been neglected. Nice little burst right there. Pickett going to bootleg it. Touchdown! Kenny Pickett connecting with Deontay Johnson. And the Steelers take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. Boy, he has been fun to watch throwing the football in this one. It's certainly not fun for that defense, though, Charles. Now up to four touchdown passes in this ball game. Yeah, we're supposed to be neutral, but I'm feeling their pain right now because he has absolutely carved up this secondary a clinic on how to attack a defense and take them out of the game. Extra point now by Boswell. And the lead is up to 18 now. So that a seven play, 80 yard drive. And in the end, it was Deontay Johnson's touchdown catch to cap the drive. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. So here are the Bengals now as they get their first possession of this second half. They'll start here with a give to Mixon. 
And he'll be brought down here at the 28. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here, and what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while, get at least two first downs, give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. Ball on the 28-yard line. Here's a second down and four. Here's Browning. Open man is Chase complete. And Chase going to pick up a Bengals first down as the tackle made up near the 35. Call it a gain of seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. First down at the 35 line. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Looking to throw. Browning able to find Higgins. Call it a gain of six on the play, and it's second down. He's going to try and do this himself. And this won't be enough to pick up the first. A gain of two, third and one. And if you like defensive football, focus on the defensive end on this play. He does everything exactly right. Reads the play and makes sure he spills it for a small gain. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Now Browning. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have a Bengals first down as they're able to convert by plenty there on third and one. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. At this point in the game, and the situation they're in, partner, these incompletions that we're seeing, they need to turn into positive snaps and soon. So second and 10, third quarter. Thanks for tagging along with us here from the Queen City of Cincinnati. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. And that is going to be incomplete as he led him a bit too much. Just a little beyond the reach there of his receiver. That's probably one he wishes he had back. He wishes it had been seven on seven in practice or maybe even routes versus air because that's a completion he makes, what, 9.9 .9 times out of 10? Just missed that one. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And, oh, that's going to wind up incomplete. Nearly their first pick of the game, but it does bring up fourth down. Give them credit for excellent coverage, tight coverage. They're doing a lot of things that we talk about in basketball. They're causing disruptions in the passing game. And as long as that continues, it'll be tough for them to gain any momentum throwing the ball downfield. And he'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. And this is going to be ruled out, I think, just inside the 20. Yes, it will. Side judge calls it at the 19-yard line. And now out come the Steelers. Well, this offense, this team, they are rolling right now, Charles. They've scored on three straight possessions. You look at the scoreboard, and they pretty much right now got this thing on cruise control. Yeah, and this is that time of game where you and I have to be prepared, right? Isn't this kind of like that empty the bucket time where you have to go into your blowout material and make sure we have some different things? That's what we're staring at right now, the way this one is going. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. As expected, he's gone to him several times in this game, but that's the first time one has slipped from his grasp. I bet he goes back to him, though. He's an excellent player. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Pickett back to throw. A short one there to Fryermuth. Nine yards, and that leaves him just short, so it'll be third and less than a yard. It certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense, and guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, 
and some toughness to go across the middle, you put it all together, you get a heck of a tight end candidate. And five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. Well, someone's been having a good game so far, and you know something? A lot has been power running. They decided to turn him loose again on third down, didn't they? They did indeed. He delivered the tough yards. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Completing it to the right side, Johnson. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 12 yards that time at a Pittsburgh first. And while we may be looking at the scoreboard, this offense certainly is not because they're showing no signs of backing down, even with a three-score lead here in the third quarter. I think they keep taking their shots. They've seen blown leads happen throughout this league. They don't want to fall victim to it themselves. Now a first down carry for Harris. And across midfield he goes and into Bengal territory. 99 yards rushing for him now to this point. They've created a nice sustained drive off of plays like that. A nice strong run there that keeps them advancing the ball. This second and four. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. From the 48-yard line, here's a second and four. Back now in Cincinnati. It's Steeler football, and they have the lead as well as we begin quarter number four. Now they nearly sprung him that time as he takes this all the way down to the 37. The Steeler first down on the pickup of 11 yards. It carries like that. That's how they're going to continue to salt this thing away here, Charles, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, how about that? A new set of downs. Clock continues to move. No better way to close out a game than to tap those mastodons you have up front and say, guys, keep pounding them. Let's keep the ball, keep their offense on the sidelines, and let's close this one out. And he'll take this down to the 33. Now, I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. On second down, this is Harris. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. As I take a look at the clock, I realize that this drive has eaten up a good portion of the fourth quarter already. Got to tell you, partner, when you're trying to salt away a game, this is exactly what it's supposed to look like. Now Pickett will look to pass it. Nice progress down the field was halted by that incompletion. They could try for some safe yards here to get things moving again or keep throwing it and pushing it downfield to try and pick up bigger yardage. Once again, they'll come up on the 26-yard line, second and 10. Here's Pickett. It's brought in by Harris. And he'll be brought down inside the 20 at the 19. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. He's already proven to be a factor in the running game on this drive. Now he gets involved in the passing game. I think what we're seeing here is the modern version of workhorse in the NFL, being able to run it and catch it with equal proficiency. Pick it now to throw off the play fake. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. I think that was a good job there defensively. They did allow him to drive all the way downfield, but once they got their backs to the goal line, they really turned up the pressure. Yeah, they let him get all the way down here. Now the field shrinks. They've struggled to convert, and that last incompletion brings up fourth. Boswell's kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So after four touchdowns in the game for this offense, this time they're forced into taking the three. But you did mention four touchdowns, right? So four out of five, not too bad. I think that's a pretty good record for them.
After the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. Cincinnati's offense coming back here onto the field. The defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and 10. Throwing on first down, Browning. This is caught, it's Boyd. And he's gonna be brought down right there, so nothing after the catch as he's dropped at the 42. That's a good way to start the drive, 17 yards and a first down. Well, those are the types of plays they probably wish they had made more of in the first three quarters. And this deficit gonna to be tough to overcome here in the fourth, but a nice first down and a pickup on that throw. Yeah, and this is where his coaches you're looking for effort and execution, even though the scoreboard is going against you. You want to find out who's going to fight, who's going to scrap, who's going to keep their heads up and continue to play. They lead big, and a major part of that has been how they've taken their play to a whole new level this second half. No points allowed since the break, and you can add another incompletion to the total number that they forced in this runaway contest. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. At this point in the game, they've got to continue to try anything they can. They're still working at it, even though this one feels like a lost cause. This offense so far on third down, they've hit it 50%, three of six to this point. This is third and 10. Able to find the open man. That's complete. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. That's a third down conversion to 24 yards there. Nice play. A three-score game here late. You can probably rule out the comeback, but certainly some kind of a moral victory to be had if they can get a few more points to close things out. And to that end, a nice pass play there to push things downfield. Yeah, and we know in this league... A loss is a loss, and no one wants anything to count as a moral victory or, boy, something that feels a little bit cheap. But if they trim that lead down to just two scores, that's still a benefit to this squad. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means they have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Out of the shotgun, they run with Mixon. No, bottled up, fumble, it's out, it's loose. Oh, and one of the linemen on the other side has got it. And they are going to set up shop at the 32-yard line. And I don't know that that fumble is going to matter a whole lot. You look at the deficit here in the fourth, it doesn't matter. The coach on the sideline still scratching his head. Yeah, not only scratching his head, but probably writing a note or two about, we're going to address this come practice next week because maybe that's the reason we're down this far. Doesn't matter at this point. But being sloppy throughout the game, not going to help them improve. The Steelers' offense now. They, and now, as with every potential turnover, they're going to take a second look at this just to make sure. The previous play is under review. Now, the question, was the knee, in fact, down before this ball comes loose? And is the video convincing enough to overturn it? A lot of factors here. Remember, you also need clear possession of the football afterwards. This is a tough one to overturn. After review of the play, the ruling on the field is reversed. So that one overturned. They say the knee was down, and that will not be ruled a fumble. So possession still theirs, but now they face a third down. Off the play fake. Browning. And that will be incomplete. At this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense, they're just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. But they blanketed the field the entire game using a variety of coverages. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. 
The Bengals try it, but it doesn't work out. And this Steeler defense able to come up with a stop. So the defense has to stay out and get one more stop. They were able to do it, forcing the incompletion. So on their record, that goes down as a successful play. It doesn't matter how they got there, how it happened. They got it done. They're the ones that are jubilant. Pickett leads his Steelers up here with a fresh set of downs at the 31-yard line. Harris will start to drive out. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 137 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. And across midfield he goes and into Bengal territory. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. Good gain there on first down. It keeps them in a running situation, probably. They did everything right on that play, didn't they? They got the leverage up front, good blocking, nice hole for him. He ends up picking up nice yardage, stays in bounds to keep the clock rolling. They are in charge of this scenario right now. They want to stay that way. And not in any rush offensively. And Najee going to have a Steelers first down as the tackle made at the 42. Hate to be blunt, but it is just continuing to prove to be the case that this O-line is manhandling this D-line right now. They deserve to roll up their sleeves and show up their biceps because they're doing exactly what you just described, manhandling the defensive front. They've got the leverage, they are powering through, and they're controlling this game. And a decent gain there as that takes us to the two-minute warning. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. So the Steelers with the football as we get you reset. And you'd have to figure they're just looking to burn these final two minutes away and get out of here with a victory. They run again with Harris. They're going to snuff this play out behind the line. We have not seen that much today. It's a loss of four. Now third down. On this day, the ground has been his, but at least on that individual play, we just saw the defense finally with a win. Yeah, they finally got one, and that's a win for them, but all game long. He's seen the holes, and they've been huge for him. Kind of like a baseball hitter in the zone. The ball seems bigger, and he's just whacking it. These guys, they've got it going today. He's going to get that to his running back out of the backfield. And he will have a Steelers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I'm not sure that that was necessarily a safety valve or a check down throw on third down. Sometimes just try and find the open guy and get him the ball. He did exactly that and found a way to pick up a first down. So first and 10 now from the 30. Harris running straight ahead and just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10 coming up. They've called his number a lot this afternoon. You wonder how much tread is left on those tires. We certainly do, but I always think back to one of my favorite coaches in the NFL. And he used to have a meeting with his running backs every year in the offseason and say, look, as many times as you're going to carry the ball, you should be able to carry it one more time. So make sure you get in shape. So this one in the win column for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And it was their defense that really made the statement after the break. They pitched the second half shutout. Yeah, think about the team that just got vanquished. They did score in the second quarter. Do you think they thought at all that that would be their last points of the game? No, I, but what a second half. The adjustment, whatever they did in the locker room, it certainly worked. It certainly did, and you're exactly right. Whether it was an adjustment, whether it was just more focus on what they planned to do going in, whether they just played better, whatever it was, it all came together in the second half, and no point were allowed. That's a great way to close them out. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. With that, we say so long from Cincinnati.